Hello YouTube and welcome to part one of Epim automation tutorial on how to build frameworks. In this video series we will build a framework from the ground up and by the end of the series you should know how to go about designing and building a framework with Appium or a different tool for that matter as most of the concepts that we will actually learn in this uh, videos will apply to other automation tools as well. So before we begin, I want to make sure that you have gone through my um, Appium Basics videos as later videos will build on what we have learned there. So if you have not watched them, um, I highly recommend to go ahead and go through those videos first. Uh, there should be a, a link on the screen right now to kind of point you in the right di uh, direction. So click it and make sure to watch those videos. So let's start with the layout of a project. Okay, but uh, before we get into creating packages and directories, let's consider a few things that a uh, framework should have. And depending on your project, you may have a longer list. But in regards to the framework that we are building, um, it should be, number one, it should be scalable, right? So um, if our requirements change, we need to be able, like, for example, we supported one phone, and now we need to support three phones. Okay, so we need to make sure that our framework can do that with minor changes to the code, or no changes at all. Um, Number two, it should be easy to read. So when we write our tests, anybody who takes a look at those tests can read them and understand what's going on. And number three, it needs to be modular. So if our requirements change and, for example, we were testing Facebook and now our requirements change and we no longer need to test Facebook, okay, we need to be able to take those tests, remove those tests, and take the API that we have wrote for Facebook and remove that API. Okay, and then we can create new API and new tests for a, a new app that we need to test. And while we do that, it should not break our framework. So meaning frameworks functionality should stay intact and we should not make any changes to the framework itself other than to the API and that specific API for Facebook and those specific tests for, for Facebook. Okay, so with those things in mind, let's start building our initial layout. Okay, and we are going to be uh, building on the project that we started working on in the basic series. So again, if you haven't watched them, uh, watch those videos go ahead and watch it so we're going to take the project that we have created and we're just going to remove everything in our main method okay and we're going to remove the signature as well because we no longer need it the signature will not be thrown anywhere in here so we're going to rename the class as well we're going to press shift f6 and we're going to rename class from main to runner Okay, we're gonna leave our main method in here. We are probably not going to use this class for a while. So it can remain in the project, but we're not going to be touching it for a long time. So let's go ahead and start creating our layout. Okay, we're gonna select a Java folder here and we're gonna create a new package and we're gonna call this package core. So this is where our core methods will go. This is our low level methods that we absolutely need for a framework to function. Okay. So let's create another package within core and call it managers. And managers are going to be classes that are going to be making some major decisions. So let's go back to Java and let's create another package and it's also going to go into the core. So we're going to say core dot and we're going to create constants. OK, 
okay and constants are going to be uh, classes that are going to be holding some static information uh, let's actually go ahead and create a class in constants we call it credentials okay and we will we'll leave it blank for now remember we're just outlining sort of the structure of the project right now we're not actually making any code we're just creating the kind of initial design for a framework so let's go to managers and create a couple of empty classes there as well for later use we are going to be populating those classes later in the videos so managers uh, for our managers we will have a test manager and we will have a driver manager so we're going to create a new java class called driver manager okay and then in addition to that to this two packages our core will have some other important uh, classes and that's test info this class is basically going to be responsible for our test information it's going to be holding some critical stuff for our tests and let's go ahead and create a new class another one <clears throat> it's going to be UI selector and then let's go create another class this is going to be UI object basically this two classes will represent a wrapper for the Appium okay and I will explain that in later videos but those are the most important classes that we will have in a framework this is the absolute lowest level that we will be building on so in addition to that let's create another class for logging some information so we're gonna call it my logger okay and this is the class that's gonna help us uh, to output some debug information when we run a code to make sure we know what our program is doing when it's running through the code and another class it's going to be called ADB okay ADB which is uh, Android debug bridge this class is going to represent ADB this is going to be very important as our framework is going to be utilizing ADB commands a lot <clears throat> and I will actually make a separate video on ADB itself later um, so as far as our core concerned this is done this is the classes and package that we will have in the core for now okay keep in mind this is initial design so this can change later when we start coding but let's go back to our java directory and let's create another package this package we are going to call api okay and api is where we're going to put all of the api for our applications and for android etc so this is just this is the class that we are going or this is the package that's going to be holding other packages and those packages will hold some classes that we will reference in our tests okay so core is going to be referenced for in API and API is going to be referenced in our tests <clears throat> but we'll talk about it later uh, so in API we are going to create uh, a couple more packages and we, we will have API for Android specific okay and then we're going to have API for some applications so we're gonna go back here to Java and we're gonna say so create new package and this package is also going to be an api so we're going to say api dot apps so apps for this particular example we will have facebook so we can go ahead and create a new package inside of the apps and we can call it facebook so this facebook package will have contained will contain API specifically for the Facebook application okay let's see so we have our API we have a core um, just to give you an idea 
what kind of better understanding of what Android will contain. Let's create a new package inside of Android and call it settings. Okay. And settings, so we have API for Android settings, and settings may contain mm, a menu item like about phone, right? So we can create a new package and call it about, okay? Something like that. <clears throat> so, and then in about package, you would put API specifically for the about activity when it comes up. But we, we will cover all of that in later videos. Right now, let's create our last package and we will call it tests. Tests, this is the package where all of our tests will go, okay? So as far as this video goes, this is enough for now. In the later videos, we are going to be covering UI selector. We're gonna create this class. Um, UI selector and create all of the methods inside of it to return UI object to us. And then in the next video, we will cover UI object. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like the video, subscribe, and have a nice day, guys. Take care.